Hi there, welcome to the fifth video in the functions and graphs uh, topic, looking at the transformation of graphs. Okay, so there's, there's two sets of things we're going to look at today, being able to identify and complete transformations, stretches, movements and reflections in the vertical direction and then the same for the horizontal direction. Now there's six different rules here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take you through all six rules. You'll have seen them before in some way, shape or form, either through trig graphs or quadratic graphs in National 5. I'm going to do a couple of examples and then you just need to go do lots of practice. Uh, okay, so all right, the first one we're going to look at is f of x plus 1. Okay, so with trig graphs, what we looked at, sine 2x, 2 sine x, you're used to those transformations. We're going to do it a little bit more generally. Sine and cos can still be involved, but we're going to look at it in terms of these f of x graphs. Okay, so here I've got my cubic function. I'm going to do the same graph, but plus 1 in the end. Okay, so notice that this plus one outside of your bracket. Okay, so here that means all these y values, how high it is, is going to have one added to it. So every bit here is going to move up one space. So the whole graph is going to move up one place there. Okay, that's a vertical movement up the way. Okay, we do f of x minus three, you get the same thing. Okay, but all these points instead of moving up, they're going to move down three places. Okay, you're going to move down three places, so you get exactly the same graph, but move down three places. Okay, now you can see there at the end, if you've got a number at the end, that is a vertical movement. So f of x plus a is working up and down the way, okay, outside the bracket notice, and it's up and down the way, and it would be the way you expect, okay, if it's a positive number, it's going up the way, if it's a negative number, it's going down the way. Okay, now we're going to look at two being on the outside, okay, or a, a multiplier being at the start. Again, outside of your f of x, outside of your bracket. Here, what's happening is every y value is getting multiplied by two. So if that was negative three, it would turn into a negative six somewhere down here. If this was a two, it would turn into a four, and so on. Your zeros here, when you multiply by two, are still going to be zero. So those points aren't going to change at all. Okay, so we're going to have the same graph but twice is uh, stretched out twice and you'll recognize that from your sine graphs okay but your general rule if you have a multiplier of k it's stretching by a factor of that multiplier so if it was two it would be twice as big and three it would stretch by a factor of three around that x-axis the x values the roots they don't change okay and lastly we're going to look at negative f of x okay and that means all your y values are being made negative. So like this one here at four would go down to negative four. This one here, if it was negative seven, say it would come up and be positive seven. So this is reflecting in your x-axis. Okay, again, notice your roots don't change. Okay, but this is a reflecting up and down the way. Okay, it's reflecting in the x-axis. Okay, this here is your line of symmetry. Okay. Now, look at those three there, just for a second. Look at these three. All, everything we're doing is outside of your f of x. Okay, the plus one at the end, outside of your bracket. The two at the front, outside of your bracket. The negative at the front, outside the bracket. It's all a vertical change. Whether it's moving, stretching, or reflecting, it's happening up and down the way. Okay, the next set of stuff we're going to look at is everything happening inside the bracket. Okay, so you can see here we've got this x plus one inside the bracket. Now, what that means is you are applying the function f to your x values from one place further up. Okay, so this point here is going to move one place further up and take that value. Okay, it's going to take it back to where it is. Okay, this point here is going to go one place further up and take it back down the way. So the whole graph is going to move one place that way. Okay, now even if it's positive, it's moving left. You recognize this from your quadratics. Okay, same with this f of x minus 3. What's happening there is your graph is going three places back and dragging the graph up to where it is. Okay, so this here is going to move three places to the right. Okay, notice it's inside the bracket. It's moving sideways. The thing you have to be careful of here is it's going the opposite way from what you would expect. Okay, this next one here, we're going to look at f of 2x. Okay, now what's happening here is for every x value, you're getting the x value twice as far away and dragging that back. Okay, here you're going twice as far away and dragging that back. 
okay? So these values are going to squeeze in towards that y-axis, okay? It's squeezing the graph in, okay? Notice that zero there, when you double zero, it's still zero, okay? If you go to four, you're getting the f of eight, so you're dragging that value for eight and bringing it back, okay? It's squeezing in by a factor of what's in there, okay? So if you're doing f of kx, it's squeezing in towards the y-axis by that factor. So if it was three, it would squeeze in by a factor of three. Twelves would become fours. Thirties uh, uh, would become tens. Okay, it's squeezing in by that factor. Okay, negative x value. Okay, f of negative x means that you are taking the value of your negative counterpart. Okay, so we're looking at three. When x is three, what's happening there is it's going over to negative three and taking that value. So over here, we move over to here. If you were at negative seven and you had that, you would go to seven and take its y value so it'd move over to here. So what's happening is you're getting a reflection around this line of symmetry here. Okay, and apologies for scribbling over. You're getting a reflection around that line of symmetry. Okay, notice these stay put, but everything else shifts over sideways. Okay, it reflects in the y-axis. In those last few examples, you notice things are happening inside the bracket, and it's all happening sideways. It's all happening horizontally. Okay, so those are your six rules. That's what's happening. We just need to apply them. Okay, we've got two examples here, and I'm going to... Well, it's tough to draw on this, so it's going to be a bit messy, but I'll try my best to keep it as tidy as possible. Okay, two-part questions here. Firstly, sketch a graph of y equals negative g of x. Notice it's outside the bracket, so I know it's happening up and down the way. Okay, negatives are going to be reflections. Okay, so this here, this graph is going to be reflected. These zeros are not going to change, but you're getting a reflection, and this here is your line of symmetry. Because it's going up and down the way, it's around there. So we're going to have the same graph, but upside down. Okay, that's not too bad. Okay, now that is the shape of the graph. That's the movement you have to show. The other information you need to include is you need to move every point that you have and show where it ends up. So I'm given a to a negative two. That a coordinate's not going to change. It's going to be the same along the way, but it's now going to be positive two. This zero one is going to reflect across and go to zero negative one, and that b three is going to be b negative three. Okay, that is enough to get your marks. You got one for the change and one for the points moving properly. Okay, be careful not to miss a point. Okay, on the same diagram, sketch a graph of y equals three negative gx. Okay, now notice that minus gx is what we've just sketched. Now this three is an additional three. Okay, so what this really is is negative g of x with an extra three plus an extra three on they've just put it at the front to try and avoid starting with a negative so we have a plus three outside the bracket that means i'm moving the whole graph up three places so that a2 is going to go to a5 that minus one is going to go to two and that b minus three is going to end up on the x-axis there this minus one is going to be above there this a2 is going to be somewhere up here so i'm going to take in the whole graph and i'm moving it up three places Okay, that's going to be your turning point, and it looks like that. And again, get all your points on. That's going to be 2, and that's going to be at B0. Okay, so take your time. Do more than one graph you need to. Obviously, it says here being on the same diagram. Take your time, move all the points, and see what's happening. Okay, second example. Okay, we've got another function. Okay, just describing the function is saying sketch a graph of y equals f of negative x. Okay, inside the bracket, that means it's happening sideways, it's a negative, so it's a reflection. Okay, so we're going to reflect around this as my line of symmetry. Okay, now I'll, I'll put a wee secret here for you. I've already tried to do this video a couple of times, but I keep messing up this graph, making it look horrific. Okay, so I'm going to have that as your turning point, that's not going to change. Okay, then, then it's going to come up the way through the x-axis. You've got a turning point there, and then it's up there. Okay, so you can see how it's reflected. That line in the middle, that y-axis, is a line of symmetry. This point here is going to be negative 1 now. That negative 3 is going to come across and be a positive 3. And that minus 4 
is going to come across here to be positive 4 and it's still going to be too high. Okay, now we're taking the same graph, that f of minus x, but we've got to multiply by 2 at the start. Outside the bracket, it means a vertical shift or a ver vertical change of some sort because it's been multiplied, it's stretching by a factor of 2. Okay, now give me two seconds, I'm just going to change the colour of my pen just to make it a bit clearer. I'm going to try and uh, we'll go green, will we? Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so now we're going to take all these points. Oh, it didn't work, man. Okay, we're going to take all these points and stretch it by a factor of two. Okay, so all your y coordinates, all your roots, because the y coordinates are zero, are going to stay the same, but everything else is going to get twice as tall, twice as stretched out. Okay, so it's going to come down here through the same point. It's going to come down to negative six instead of negative three. Back up through the root. I've missed it. And then up there. Okay, so that three should be the same there. Yeah. This goes through negative six. That's going to go through negative one as well. And this four two is now at four four because it's twice as high. Okay, so you're stretching it by a factor of two. Okay, now all these questions are just going to be that. It's going to be a couple of different movements, two, maybe three, where you're having to do different things, whether it's a stretch, whether it's a movement, or whether it's a reflection. Okay, so going back to what we need to know, and this is going to just take practice. Okay, being able to identify and complete stretches, movements, and reflections in the vertical directions. Okay, so a stretch, if you've got a number at the front, if you've got a number at the front, it's going to Okay, number the front stretches it by a fact that factor. If you've got a plus three, it moves it up three. Reflection, the negative flips it in the x-axis, flips it up and down the way. And we also need to be able to identify and complete stretches, movements, and reflections in the horizontal direction. Okay, so if you've got a factor of two inside the bracket, that squeezes it in by a factor of two. Okay, the movement, okay, if you put a plus three inside the bracket, that means it's moving to the left three. And reflection, if you put a ne f of negative x, that's a reflection sideways in the y-axis. Okay, now I know it's, it's not ideal, but it's tricky to do those sketches at the end. Okay, but I'm hoping you're taking something from that. Go away, get the practice. That's the best way to learn this one, as ever. Okay, thank you for your time.